I know she has a field trip. Wait, I, I signed a permission slip. Go look in her backpack. Go look in her lunchbox. Yeah, I told you. Oh, what's a little mustard? You can still read the signature. I, I, I had breakfast. I got something on my way to work. I, it, oatmeal. Mom, mom, I have exactly five minutes to relax before starting my day, okay? Oh, you're breaking up. Bye. I have an idea. Judge Gray. I moved the Harris evidentiary hearing to tomorrow. Donna's in my chambers with something on an easel. You agreed to cover a civil case for Judge Rooney while he was out for knee surgery? Old college football injury? Judges should not play college ball. <laughs> well, the good news is you get to hear it on your own turf. Due to lack of available space in civil court. Wow, the litigators are slumming it. Should we have valet parking? That's right. Uh, about my idea. Yeah, th those look like blueprints. Well, I took some engineering courses in college. I, I don't hear ideas on blueprints. Uh, no, like, I, 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 was, I, I was thinking, if we had a playroom where kids could wait when they were here to testify in child molestation cases... I'm hearing it, aren't I? Uh, then they wouldn't have to run into the defendant in the hall. Donna, Judge Gray is not listening. Uh, but also, statistics indicate that a lack of child care is one of the main reasons why parents miss their court dates. We have trouble getting paper clips. Explain to Donna that no one's going to build us a room. Nobody's going to build us a room. But if a judge of your stature suggests it, well, then... This is not a hill I intend to die on. Or even start climbing. Done. What are you really up to? Nothing. And if it helps children, then what's the difference? Hello? I need someone to say all rise and the rest of it. You're late. Well, if you wanted me to be on time, you should have picked me up at Teen Harbor. Oh, wait. Teen Harbor got shut down thanks to your battle axe fascist ants. You reek. Take off your jacket. If you want an apartment, you have to at least look like you're trying. Oh, that's good. That, that's really good. Impress the landlord by identifying yourself with a mass murderer. For your information, Charles Hansen is a misunderstood poet and musician. Manson. Charles Manson. And he's a psychotic misanthrope. Remove the shirt, apply the deodorant to your pits, put on this shirt, then the jacket, in that order. Put them on yourself. Fine. Sleep on a scrap of damn cardboard in front of a doorway. Just one more bum for me to step over my way to Starbucks for a double latte. Ah. This would be your room. It used to be our son's. As you can see, you'll have your own bedroom and bath. Young man your age needs his privacy. There'd be no problem about redecorating. Oh, no, it's not. It's as not if, a shrine, if that's what you're thinking. You could redecorate any way you'd like. Make it your own place, completely. And there are several other young people in the neighborhood. Lots of sidewalks for bike riding. Bike riding? Eric is 16. I'm afraid his sidewalk bike riding days are over. Well, of course they are. Well, it's, uh, it's just a, a really great neighborhood. And a great room. And it's in your school district, so you wouldn't have to change. I'm, I'm going to go down and wait in the car. Oh. Let me talk to him.
that was rude. They're too old. They're my age. Is it all of them? All of who? Gay, friendly, foster families. You gotta work through your whole list by now. It's not a long list. You know, for a boy who was, for all intents and purposes, living on the street, you've gotten pretty fussy about where you lay your head at night. <clears throat> we better hurry. To pick up Lauren. Betty and Jeffrey Christopher are suing H. Marlis Incorporated, the Morley Corporation and the McMillan Company on behalf of their son, Jason Christopher, age 15, alleging these cigarette makers engaged in illegal advertising campaigns targeted towards children, which resulted in Jason's addiction and his subsequent smoking-related emphysema. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Pippon, I'm surprised your employers haven't asked you to settle out of court. Well, even better, Your Honor, we're requesting a summary judgment on the basis that Jason Christopher's emphysema was not caused by his use of tobacco. Wow. America's waiting for that revelation, along with the identity of Nicole Simpson's real killers. We're willing to produce our expert witness at a hearing before incurring the expense of a full-blown trial. I'll hear that witness. Your Honor, why protest, Miss Little? You'll get a preview of Mr. Pierpont's most compelling argument. I withdraw my objection. Zounds me. It's pronounced zounds. It means God's wounds, a medieval exclamation. A killing yikes. Why are you doing Shakespeare in the third grade? My teacher says we have to rewrite some stuff in our own words to show that we understand it. Ooh, sanctioned plagiarism. How nice. Mommy, you want to hear the plan writing? Rewriting. She'll claim credit for the Constitution next. Absolutely. The two noble kinsmen. What's that mean? Of the same clan. Family. Lauren, your background is Irish. You should know the word clan. The Two Noble Kids by Lauren Cass. And William Shakespeare. You got the forks, shrimp? Of course. I've been saying that you Lauren's going to miss Eric when he's gone. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have brought him home, maybe, but I didn't see that I had any choice. I like him. Lauren likes him. As far as I'm concerned, he can stay as long as you want. I want him to stay just long enough to find a good foster situation. You think I don't know that it's bending the rules? Mom, I'm not criticizing you. Gotcha. Come on. You can't take it personally. Getting an apartment is tough for anybody. Fifth place we've been. Take a hint, man. This one's gonna say no, too. Think positive thoughts. I got a buddy with AIDS. It's not exactly the type of positive I was talking about. Now, the point is, if I did have AIDS, I'd have a place to crash. You want to live in a hospice? No, man. There's all these programs. You know, if you got the virus, they help you find a place. They pitch in for part of the rent. It's a buy. I'm not sure having an apartment is a good trade-off for, you know, dying. No, 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 look. You get HIV, right? Ten years later, it turns into AIDS. Ten years after that, you croak. Well, you think they won't have a cure in 20 years? You see, you, you gotta be thinking ahead all the time. This is a moronic conversation. Nobody's gonna give me a chance. I have a good feeling about this one. I'm afraid the application has been denied. Sorry. <laughs> That's the shock of the universe. Why has Mr. Conklin's application been denied? You don't want to know. This ain't even my jacket if that's your problem, ma'am. It is his right under the law to know why he is being denied shelter. I couldn't say for sure, but maybe it's because no druggy street trash is going to live here, bringing out the police all hours Mr. of the night. Mr. Conklin has had problems in the past, but he has taken impressive steps. Maybe you never heard. I'm reformed. Please, but didn't he like us? Eric is not only at a difficult age, he's a difficult placement. Because he's gay. 
We can deal with it. As you know, we've had some experience with that. Our son. We lost him. Yes. AIDS, six years ago. I'm familiar with your file. I'm sorry. Look, I doubt you will ever be able to find foster parents as sympathetic to Eric's particular needs as Luther and I are. Because we've been through this. Couldn't you speak with Eric again? Yeah. Help him understand that we could give him a good home. Maybe the best home he'll ever find. made a very wise decision. Although survivorship whole life offers no conversion option. Honey. I'm sorry, I thought you'd be done. Oh, we're just wrapping up. I'll drop the paperwork and have it ready for you to sign next week. This is Mr. and Mrs. Williams, my wife Jillian. Hi. Hi. Your daughter's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Nicole takes after her mother, obviously. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, your daughter's beautiful, too. He's a boy, actually. <clears throat> We should have the Williamses over for dinner sometime. Oh, well, that would be nice. How's Thursday? Thursday is when we eat at your mother's. The whole family gets together. Oh, it's not mandatory exactly. We can skip family dinner night and have you come over to our house. I could uh, get the paperwork done early and have it ready for you to sign. Okay, I guess. Well, that's great. See you Thursday then. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Pretty good, huh? See how I picked up on your signal, sir? What signals? You wanted them to come to dinner? I made it happen. Sometime, Peter, not right away. Why not? Because Thursday they're shutting down the water mains on our street. Oh. No problem, I'll cancel. After making such a big deal, they'll think you're canceling because of me. And the fact is, we need friends like the Williamses. Friends who need insurance? Peter, our son is African American. Ah, oh, yes, of course. And I think, for Ned's sake, we should make an effort to have diversity in our lives. I'll invite them to my mom's. Well, I would feel more comfortable doing it in our own home, where things could be... Under your complete and utter domination? <laughs> I'm not a control freak. I am not. It'll be great, honey. Judge Grimble. Uh, your court clerk said you wanted to see me? Donna? Why? Something about a children's area. She called you about that? I set up an area for victims of violent crime so that they wouldn't be intimidated in the hallway by the defendants. She said you wanted to use my model. Yeah, I, I don't think this is about that. What? Uh, I think this was her effort to <laughs> to get you in the same room with me so that I could ask you what I need to ask you. Which is what? Were you ever going to call me? Yes. Because we went out, and even though it wasn't a very good evening, we agreed to try again, and you said that you'd call me, and, and yet you did not. Well, I didn't want to call you too soon. Too soon? For what? It's my understanding that women don't respond well to a man who is overeager. Are you overeager? There's no way to answer that question in a way which reflects well on me. Would you like to go out to dinner with me tonight at 7 o'clock? <laughs> oh. You better be hesitating because you don't want to appear overeager. No. Yes. No! Uh, I was hoping to ask you before you ask me. Well, it's not a competition. Have you been dating lately? Because believe me, it is a competition. Okay, you, you know what, just... Forget it. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Uh, give me a chance. I would be delighted to have dinner with you tonight. I accept. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Eric's gonna show me how to spam them. Slam dunk. It's basketball, not lunch. Lauren, uh, go out and warm up the ball. 
I need to speak with Eric for a moment. Go ahead. I'll be right out. She looks up to you. Big deal. She's four feet tall. <laughs> Eric, I spoke with the Wrights today. Uh, who's that? You know perfectly well who's that. You should give them a chance. You said I'd have veto power over who might be my next foster family. I never use the term veto power. The Wrights are nice people, and they have experience raising a gay son. So this is some kind of blind date? He's dead, Eric. Oh. It's taken them several years to decide to foster, which means it might be a place where you'd be needed. What if I don't like it? Give it a chance. What if I still don't like it? Uh, <clears throat> you might try approaching this with, with the right attitude. If you don't like it, we will uh, come up with a solution. And I could come back here? Well, that's uh, one of many possible solutions, isn't it? <laughs> Lauren's waiting for you outside. No, no, she's not. She's watching us through the door. to say that to my date it's really a way of complimenting myself look at me i'm the kind of guy who gets beautiful dates <laughs> look i said you're beautiful couldn't you just say thank you like a normal beautiful woman could you please stop calling me beautiful absolutely it's sheer hypocrisy you being so homely it's like sitting across from an old boot Am I difficult? A little difficult, yeah. But in a way that makes you exciting. It's like having dinner with a time bomb. Be being a judge, don't you think it can make you a little... A megalomaniac? Well, not that it makes you that way. I mean me. Uh, because... Because... Well, people are forced to listen to us all the time and do what we say. And then we go into the real world. Say a pizza joint. And we're just normal folk. Folk? You know what I mean. I absolutely do. I think that went well. What? Oh, you mean the fact that we had an entire exchange without a disagreement? Yeah, except I thought I nearly blew it with that megalomaniac bit. Oh, no, oh, no, you covered beautifully. Thank you. Mm. So the date is... It's going pretty well, I think. Me too. <laughs> Dr. Carson, what kind of doctor are you? I'm an internist attached to Johns Hopkins University with attending status at Cedar sinai in New York. I'm an oncologist specializing in diseases of the lung, and I've published extensively in medical toxicology exposure analysis. I accept that Dr. Carson is an expert, Mr. Pierpont. Thank you. <coughs> now, Dr. Carson, what is your view of smoking? My view is that of any doctor who sees the suffering and disease the use of tobacco causes on a daily basis. Which is? It's the most dangerous addiction in the country. I think that the people who run tobacco companies are morally bankrupt and ethically perverse. Uh, Dr. Carson, I'm a little confused. If those are your feelings, then why are you here testifying on behalf of a tobacco company? If Mr. Pierpont's company uses me as an expert witness today, then they'll have an awfully hard time disparaging my reputation the next time I'm on the other side. Dr. Carson, what did you discover about Jason Christopher? I found obstructive emphysema with atrophy and dilatation of the alveoli and destruction of the vascular bed. And, in your opinion, was this caused by his smoking? No.
No. The tissue breakdown is in the lower lung region, inconsistent with damage done by smoking-related emphysema. Well, if it wasn't smoking that caused the damage, <laughs> what was it? Jason Christopher suffers from AAT emphysema, which is caused by an inherited protein deficiency. The AAT protein neutralizes an enzyme which fights bacteria in the lungs. Unchecked by AAT, the enzyme eats away lung tissue and can be fatal if its progress isn't slowed or halted. With an AAT deficiency, developing emphysema is almost inevitable. Your Honor, incontrovertible medical... <coughs> <coughs> Incontrovertible medical evidence shows that Jason Christopher's condition is pre-existing. Ergo, we are requesting a summary judgment in favor of our clients. Oh, hold your horses, Mr. Pierpont. Do you have any questions for Dr. Carson? Dr. Carson, are you telling me that smoking has nothing to do with Jason's condition? No doubt smoking accelerated the progression. For effective treatment, Jason should have stopped smoking immediately upon diagnosis. He, he hasn't? My information is that he has not. Your Honor, I have no more questions, but I would like to argue that Dr. Carson's testimony is simply the opinion of one expert witness and does not merit a summary judgment. I will take that under advisement. Jason. Go ahead. Try again. Go in. Black. Black takes a free throw. I don't like this game anymore. Come on, you got home court advantage. What's that? Uh, when you're on home court, it means you're home. The fans are rooting for you, the mascot and cheerleaders. All your friends and family are there to cheer you on. It's not like being on the road where nobody knows you, nobody cares. Cassidy shoots the ball. It's going with an assist from Black. What? She scores. I scored, yeah. I scored. In 30 years, Try I've never you. taken my work home like this. Well, Eric is special, Mom. Every day at work, I see some child I think about bringing home, but I know not to do it. Obviously, I'm becoming soft-headed. Soft-hearted. You're allowed once every 30 years. Black takes a free throw. And it's all net. Black is back. Black is back. Yeah. What are you doing, home? I have a brief from the forces of evil to read and accept and act upon. Sue me. I love you. Shoot. Oh, pretty close. All right, Mr. Black. You are not leaving here lugging a garbage bag. Garbage bags, foster kids' luggage collection. Uh, Lauren, run into the kitchen and bring me that thing that's by the stairs. Okay. So the Reds are nice people, right? Yes, they're nice people. Take your best shot, old lady. This, uh, <clears throat> this suitcase belonged to my husband. Very retro chic. Open it.
This is delicious. <laughs> I thank you, Charlene, but my daughter-in-law made me promise not to talk too much. <laughs> we tend to eat low-fat meals for the most part. So do we. Except for when we eat here. Yeah, but here the food tastes great. It sure does. What? So, Leroy. Actually, it's pronounced Leroy. It means the king in French. Well, I'm right there with you on the proper pronunciation of names, Charlene. And no shortening of names, no nicknames. Leroy, do you play golf? Oh, honey, not everyone is Tiger Woods. Oh, not that you couldn't be or, or, or that you wouldn't be j just... So, uh, Leroy, are, are you a golfer? Leroy would golf all day, every Saturday, if I let him. Same here, but Jillian would have my head. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> what? Judge Gray, I'm very interested in the work you do. Your job is very vital to the community. I mean, my own career seems so inferior by comparison. Thank you, Charlene. What is it that you do? Commercial real estate, when I can get time away from Nicole. Really? I love real estate. I go house hunting just for fun sometimes. And this is commercial real estate. Uh, oh. I guess it's different. Leroy sells uh, computer service warranties. We're both insurance men. And would-be golfers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing a play for school. A play? Isn't that impressive? Isn't that impressive? Yeah. What's it called? The Two Noble Klansmen. <coughs> kinsmen, not Klansmen, with a C, Klansmen. It's Shakespeare, Two Noble Kinsmen. It's one of Shakespeare's lesser known works. Yeah. Uh, is this decaf? Oh, absolutely. You made yourself very clear on that count. No caffeine. No, sir. More pie? No, thank you. Black is back! Oh, sorry. Eric, what do you think you're doing here? What? You want me peddling my ass on the streets? Because that's where I'm going if you send me back to those freaks. That's Eric. He's sort of a... A friend of the family's. Go, go ahead, Mama. I'm sure Leroy and Charlene will, will understand. Maxine, I need your help because I have an ex-junkie out there somewhere. I'm out of places to look and you owe me. Sorry. Hello. And this is my cousin, Kyle. What do you mean I owe you? Remember Teen Harbor? I'll, I'll go with you. There's stuff but like this going on around here all the time. Peter. <laughs> Amy, tell Eric that I will speak to him in the morning, and by that time, I expect him to be over his snotty teenage tantrum. It's been a pleasure. Call, Mom. Okay? Eric, now would this be the junkie or the street hustler? Out of the goodness of your heart, after your job ended, you continue to try and help this young man find an apartment, get his life back on track. Yes, you're obviously some kind of monster. Sarcasm sounds good to me on this one. You can't take things this personally. You'll do harm to your soul. X-Ray was my first client, and until today, I've done a good job with him. Teen Harbor was being used as a safe place to deal drugs and God knows what else. But if I hadn't acted so swiftly... Maybe I could have come up with a solution other than closing it down altogether. Hey, baby. Are you actually apologizing? No. I'm, no, I'm offering to help you get Teen Harbor reopened. Wow. Maxine Gray apologizes, and I haven't even got a witness. <clears throat> How could we possibly have made so many PC blunders in one night? What must they think of us? Jillian, they, they were all... Perfectly honest mistakes. I thought that went great. She was a little tense, but 
he seemed like a very nice... Are you kidding? She was awful. Fussy, opinionated, very controlling. And you know what? I think the only reason she came to dinner was that Amy is an important judge and she wanted to meet her. What kind of person has ulterior motives like that? You only invited them because they're black. That's an ulterior motive. Peter... No, Peter's right. I'm just as bad as she is. And I don't let you golf. Or eat saturated fat. I don't let people call you Pete. Honey, I know it's because you love me. The saturated fat thing, anyway. Well, what about Ned? If we don't have any black friends, he's going to grow up in this weird, colorless limbo. He'll end up like Bryant Gumbel. Uh, Jillian, Ned will be fine, no matter who he's friends with. Amy's right, honey. And you're not as bad as she is. <laughs> you're not bad at all. Y you are the opposite of bad. And you're way hotter than Charlene, too. Way hotter. What is this place? It's a shooting gallery. Never been in one of these? Come from a higher class of drug addiction. The important part of what I said was not the apology. It was my offer to help put Teen Harbor back together. Hey, hurry up, hurry up with that. That's him. It's X-ray. It's Manson, not Hanson. See, I listened to you. We we're telling you to shoot up. I didn't do it for the jump, man. I did it for the virus. Did you use a dirty needle? No worries. Oh, my God. Because they'll find a cure, right? Because you get all big and stupid. Get him to emergency and see if they'll put him on a cocktail. Kyle. Morning. What happened? Why don't you ask them? I have. Now I'd like to hear from you. Eric, if you are simply looking for reasons not to leave here, then we have a problem. Look, they're all... It's great that you're gay and, and be proud of who you are and all that. They even signed us up at some support group for families with gay teens. I mean, jeez. All right, Eric, maybe they're a little overly keen. But that doesn't mean they're creepy or freaky. They don't want me. They were waiting for anybody. Who could replace their son? You know what else? I'm not gay enough to replace him. Excuse me? He was this big activist type in high school, really high profile. I'm not like that. I'm quiet. Um, and what if I liked a girl? Do you? Like a girl? Uh, well, that's not the point. The point is, if I did like a girl, I'd, I'd be letting them down in some twisted way, right? It could happen. Oh, for heaven's sakes, take the clothes out of the suitcase and put them in the drawer. girl what you said what if I liked a girl not what if I liked girls look uh, you told me it was okay to be confused about things like this I'm telling you I'm confused 
Well, can, can't you find someone who's like a hundred percent homo to live with the rights? That's what they really want. Let's get breakfast. Does this girl have a name? Before I rule on your motion for summary judgment, I have a few questions for Jason. Uh, your Honor, I'm not sure that anything he might have to say would be relevant here. But, uh, you are the judge. How old were you when you started smoking? Eight. By the time I was 12, I smoked a pack a day. Why? What? Why did, why did you start smoking at eight? Cousin got me into it. I thought, I thought it looked cool. When did you get emphysema? I got short of breath. About a year ago. found the emphysema. But you didn't quit? I... I did. At first, but... I'm... I'm gonna die, Judge Gray. What's the matter now? Now if I quit? parents know you were smoking? Not until I got sick. Thank you. Uh, I am allowing Mr. Pierpont's motion for summary judgment in favor of his clients. No damages are awarded. Your Honor, please. The Christophers deserve their day in court. I agree, Miss Little. Just not on this specific complaint. I don't understand. I found Dr. Carson's testimony that Jason's emphysema was not caused by smoking absolutely convincing. Equally convincing was her testimony that by continuing to smoke, he irrevocably diminished his chances of recovery. Maybe next time Dr. Carson can testify for the Christophers and not against them. I'd be delighted. I prefer working on the side of the angels. Excuse me, Your Honor, why don't you just come right out and tell the Christophers how to construct a new complaint? I believe I just did. I also believe that you'll decide to settle out of court. Uh, you, madam, are a loose cannon. I'll be bringing this up with the Judicial Review Committee. Give it your best shot. Better men than you have tried. We're done here. All rise. And 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 Jason. Yes, Your Honor. Regardless of how much life you have left, it is still life, and it is still a gift. And even though you have a grown-up disease, you are a child. And children should listen to their parents. Quit smoking. Put him on the cocktail. It's early enough. If there's HIV in his bloodstream, there's a chance we can shut it down. Can you keep him here? No. It's a pretty rigorous regimen, but if he can read, he'll be able to take all his meds at the right time. Problem is, I'm afraid he won't take all the medication. He will if he doesn't want to get AIDS. He wants to test positive. Why? 
So he can get an apartment. That's insane. Tell him. Orange chicken. Beef and broccoli. Another orange chicken. That's Amy's favorite. Yeah, green, slimy stuff. Bok choy. Like I said. So that smells good. Who's? I love who's. We haven't had who's for a long time. Well, we haven't had these many people to feed in a long time. Did somebody else move in? Not yet. Should I set the table? Eric's turn. Okay, then can I take a break? Fifteen minutes. going to smoke probably can you put these on the table sure mom what are you doing i'm going outside to smoke what do you want me to say amy i want you to quit i know that anything else i'm, I'm afraid you're gonna die i am gonna die i i mean soon i just i want you to be here for, for me. For us. Good God, you live with me, Amy. How much more here can I be for you? My husband died and left me alone with three children to finish raising, and I mistakenly thought that I would actually finish and could have some time to myself. I now realize that probably won't happen, but no matter who is in my house, I will live the rest of my life on my terms. Well, it probably won't be that long the way you're going. Do you want to open this door, Amy? Yeah. You exist on nine cups of coffee a day. You eat powdered sugar for breakfast. You drink like a European. And you have sex with people that you don't care about. Mom, it's just... You're not... I just feel... Amy... I love you, too. Coming up next on TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime, there's drama in the courtroom when a mother defends her right to kidnap her son. Don't miss Law and Order next.